You know what? You come, come up here for a second. This is Chris Martinez, and odds are you have no clue who he is. He's not a famous YouTuber, and in fact, he's hardly ever been in front of a camera. Yet at this moment, he finds himself on live TV, face to face with his idol. Hey, that's Kevin Smith, Silent Bob, from all those terrible Jane Silent Bob type pictures, man. Check out Chris is Real. It is far more visually interesting than any movie I ever made. Chris was just four years old the first time he met one of his heroes. Things did not go as smoothly then. His interest in how his heroes were brought to life never stopped growing, eventually finding himself inside the octagon with UFC champions. Me and my friend uh, Chris uh, Martinez, we uh, produce it, uh, we direct it, we do it ourselves. He does all the editing. It was just like, wow, this guy does really good work. I pulled him aside and was like, you got a knack for this. I go, let me hire you. I hired him, me and him, we busted stuff out. But I've been watching uh, a couple of episodes of your show, and it's Tito Ortiz Uncaged. Correct. And great production value. Looks like you guys are really spending some money to do these things because they look phenomenal. I have a really good editor, you know, Chris Martinez. But the lighting is, everything about it is really nice. It, thank you very much. It's just, uh, I think when you have someone who puts their heart and soul into something um, that I love and he has my back the same way, I think you get a good product. And it shows. I mean, I look at it and I'm just like, wow, this is getting better and better and better. And how do you reinvent yourself each and every time to make it better? And Chris Martinez is doing that. And I'm very thankful. And um, I just, uh, I think I got something pretty good that is going to keep working. I dig it. I couldn't have said it any better myself. I'm talking with Chris, and we just got finished talking about the Tito Ortiz on case. And I'm like, man. What possessed you to think of something like this? And production value is very high. Congratulations on the badass, good looking show with cool content. Hey, just tell us who you are from start. My name is Marlon Vera. Everybody knows me as Cheetah, and I came from Ecuador. Well, for this fight, I, I decided to have a, a camera crew with me. Uh, I partnered up with Chris Martinez, and we, we're gonna start making series of, of my life, of my training, or of my upcoming fight. I don't give two fucks who you are. I'm gonna punch in the face. I'm gonna try to hurt you with any thing. But if you say something on social media, that's good, promote the fight. But for me, it's business. I'm gonna go in there, fight, and you know, do anything I can do to win the fight. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. On stage with Grammy winning icons. Hey, what's, what's up, up? Power 10? Yeah, yeah, shout out to Power 10, it's neighborhood net. Power oh, 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 it's a birds, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, you dig that? Come out here. This is great music we've been doing from the jump for years, you know. And down the red carpet with legends of Hollywood. I have to watch UFC. Joining you have to see. Have you have seen the fighting? Or? No. 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 I'm no. Sorry. Look at me. Wonderful. Pick some ass. You're gonna kill it. <laughs> what are you? Are you two? Are you two? We'll see you guys soon, all right? All yeah. right, take care. Hit that subscribe button too. We love you. Subscribe again. Get it. Subscribe again. Yeah. Yeah. Did you watch UFC? Yeah, watch yeah. UFC. Go out there and handle your business. <laughs> Good luck, keep punching. This is Chris Martinez. You know his story well. Perhaps next time, he can help tell yours. And that's the bottom line, because we said so. He's a father, a martial artist, he's a certified BMF, and today he's here to talk to us. Lewis, my buddy, how you doing? Yeah, man, I, li I like the intro. I like the intro, brother. That was awesome. You know, we've all seen you on TV, uh, kicking ass. Tell me a little bit about you, you know, when you were young. Were you, were you and your brother always uh, a tag team just uh, causing havoc out there? Or No, 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 no. We, we were not, brother. Tell you the truth. One thing that everybody gets wrong, brother, here, we're not twins. Not a little. A lot of people don't know that we're not twins. We're three years apart, and I'm better looking. <laughs> and the reason why he got casted on the show was, and this is how he started acting. I'll give you that, and then I go back to how I started acting. But this is just the funniest thing because of Breaking Bad and how he started was that I had an audition. I already been acting for seven, eight years, whatever it was, right? And I get this audition, and I see the breakdown, and it says, "Um, we need two guys that look alike." or twin brothers or cousins, whatever, but they need to look alike, very similar. And I see the, the breakdown and I'm like, shit. Well, uh, Danny can't go because he's not an actor. He has no credits. He does not have one credit. All right, so I couldn't take him. And so I go to the audition hoping that someone looks like me, some ugly motherfucker looks like me. I go to the audition, I do my piece. I go in, do two scenes. 
Uh, and right after, I worked with this casting people before and probably four shows, so they knew me well. So right after my scenes that I did, they were like, hey, um, how's everything? I'm like, well, everything's cool. Uh, yeah, any new tattoos? Yeah, as a matter of fact, my brother did a piece on my leg, right? And I show them, and they, but when I said brother, it was a moment when they were like talking to like, wait, what? You have a brother? And I was like, yeah. Does it look like you? I said, no, he's not as good looking, but yeah, he, he looks a little bit like me. And, and then I start, and I said, no, nah, he does look like me a lot. Any acting experience? I said, none, not once in front of a camera. Hmm. For about five seconds thinking, you know what? Here, there's two scenes, bring him in tomorrow, help him out a little bit, and uh, we'll go from there. I grab the scenes as soon as I walk out. I call my brother. Hey, I got you an addition. Da 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 da. And I give him the whole bunch of He was there within the hour, getting the scenes, and he went study, came out, and said, "No, you don't know. Go back." And I, I, I'm not nice when it comes down to this shit. You know, it's very serious for me. So he, you know, when somebody thinks that acting is easy, it could be easy. It's easy if you're prepared. Danny did not know that at the time. So when he came out of the room from studying, he he gives me this. I think I'm ready. I'm like, what? You think you're ready? Get back in there right now. You should know your lines, his lines, the whole, you, you should know it backwards through everything. So he goes back in, a couple hours later, comes back out, and we did the thing, you know, the couple of scenes. He, he was there, but said, hey, you need to go more. Here's some coffee, go back in there, boom, went more. He studied, 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 boom. He got it. The next day, we went to the audition for, uh, for Breaking Bad, and I know my brother, he was fucking nervous. He, he was like a, like a robot walking. Like, mm, mm, mm. When Danny is like, you know how you see me talking right now, like a very animated motherfucker? Well, Danny's double this. Danny's double, bro. But that, that day he was like, yeah, no, I'm not nervous. Yeah, and then he went in. I was nervous as shit. I was nervous as shit for him, but he went into the audition. By him. Like we went drunk together. He went in, uh, did the two scenes. Right after that, we, the, uh, we went in together to do an improv in Spanish. Uh, we left. And two days later, they called us. You guys got the job. Two weeks after that, we were in New Mexico shooting Breaking Bad. And that is how Danny started fucking acting. Fucking lucky motherfucker. I should be his agent, bro. I should be charging him like 10, 20% of everything he does. I think so. <laughs> All his uh, royalties and everything. So yeah, brother, they, you know what I'm saying? They had you read lines, but then your characters, they're uh oh, they're pretty wow. mute, right? They don't have too many lines. So Dude, that you're out? good. Chris, I'm telling you, that's a ninja question right there. That 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 was quick, bro. What the hell you do? You're good. Bro, do you know what they did for for scenes? Um they gave us two scenes that uh Walter uh when Walter met with Gus at the restaurant for the first time. And he, and he was talking to uh, Gus and Walter were talking about Jesse and, and Gus was telling him how, how, how do you deal with a junkie and, you know, giving him shit. So we did those scenes, those two scenes. There was two scenes and we did those. At the time, I did not know. I didn't even know who, who was. I thought it was going to be Walter or Gus or whatever the heck, you know, because they did not specify. It was just a scene to see if you have some acting in you to, to cast those roles, you know, and that look was a big part of it, but they wanted to know that later you're going to be able to do some stuff. So that, that, that's what we auditioned. Yeah. And, and then when we got the job, bro, the funny thing that you said, so that was that the line, the, the scenes were that, but when we got the job and we found out that, that we were not going to talk as much. And we talked like on three episodes and we said like, in Spanish for like this much, like a little bit like, hey, I'm going to go get you or something, whatever. But so we got the job and I'm thinking I'm going to get the script and I'm going to read some shit and I'm going to have to study. I'm always getting ready. I have to study. I have to pray. I have to study. So we get the script. I look through the whole fucking thing. Nothing. And we have a video call with Vince. Um, and Vince was, oh, thank you, guys. Vince getting a creator. He was, thank you so much, guys. It's so awesome. You were great. And da 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 da. And I said, guys, I am going to make you the scariest motherfuckers ever. And you're going to do this. And he's making a scene, bro. Like, you're going to be King Kong, right? And then he ends up with, like, yeah, baddest, craziest, scariest. And you're not going to say a thing. 
And I was like, what? I, I, in my mind, I didn't say it because that's Vince Gilligan, bro. But in my mind, I was thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> how, how, how are we going to be there? Oh, this and this and that. And I said, anything? You know? And that was me thinking at the time. I didn't say shit. I just, you know how you say a uh, smiling wave? I said, yes, 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 yes. That was me. But then later when we shot it, bro, and I saw it, man, I was thinking, this motherfucker is a genius. This dude's smart. You know, like when he knows the vision, bro, where he's going, where he wants to go, it's amazing, bro. It's amazing, you know? Yeah, it reminds me of like, uh, it reminds me of like maybe Jaws, uh, where you don't see the shark, you know, and you know it's coming. That's what makes it scarier. You know, the scene where you guys were sitting on the bed and, and Walter's in the shower, you know, that's just terrifying. So... Uh, it was realistic and it's scary. And uh, after meeting you, you know, you couldn't be further from that character in that sense. You know, you are a very colorful guy. You, 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 you know, you fill the room with uh, a good energy. Um, and uh, if you say Thank your brother you. is double that, then uh, sounds like a, a, a full house over there. So, oh, brother, my brother's a party. I tend to uh, not watch shows the first time around, but then me and my wife end up binging it way later. So, we just did Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul like months ago, you know. So, oh, that's awesome. You're my first guest. I want to thank you. I know you're busy. So, um, oh, my brother, what an honor for me to be the first. You're that kind of a guy. You're a cool dude. You're a go getter, bro. Come on. You got to have people like that around you, bro. You know, that's why I like that shit, bro. You, you go and make shit happen. I like that, bro. That's what I do. Something, hey, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is not too long ago, bro, when we, we started training with Blake. It's only a few weeks, bro, and, and boom. And we tried to do this shit last week, but, you know, with, with a lot of crazy shit going on. But, you know, I like that, bro. Like, on the fly, let's do something. Let's fucking do it. Don't wait two years to do it. Go do it. I like that, bro. I like that a lot. Thanks, man. I, I know it takes a lot of hard work to accomplish anything. And when I meet people like yourself who have a great body of work, it tells me the type of person uh, you are and, and how uh, the journey might have been. So could you share with us? You know, I, I know it's a, probably a huge story that we might get into more later. But what's the general story of like what makes you tick, how you grew up and who you are outside of your characters? Man. I'll tell you a little bit, and we'll probably extend on this story how I grew up. But a lot of people maybe know, maybe some of you don't know. Uh, I'm originally from Honduras, Central America. I came here in 1991. I did not know a lick of English, nothing, not a fucking word. And I went to school here. And, and man, school was rough, man. School was rough. Now, I got picked on, bro, a lot. My brother, everybody did that. I guess, you know, if you don't, I, people don't know this, man, but if you don't speak the language, people think you're a fucking alien, like you're from fucking Mars and shit, you know? They treat you like shit, and you, they look at you like shit. So I always had that in my mind, and I have resentment towards everybody at school for that, everybody that was mean to me and messed to everybody. So then, you know, in those years, I, it was a dark place for me. Every, nobody, everybody looks at you like you're shit. So, you know, to make it short, I don't want to say it. I'm, I'll tell you guys in detail later. I ended up joining a gang because, you know, you want to belong somewhere, somebody that, that, that takes you in for who you are, which is not true. But uh, we'll expand on that later. It's, it's not true. That's not the right way to do things. Trust me. This guy, trust me. So then I, I did that uh, later. I mean, not long after I did that, I started doing some shit. Went to jail, county jail, county jail. And you know how it is. Once you do bad shit like that, it just keeps growing and growing, escalating, escalating. So from jail, regular county jail, LA county jail, boom, prison, and out of prison, prison again, out of pr prison again. So, you know, it was like, like a site. You just keep going. You get out to go back in. And if you, if you keep doing it, your, your whole life, you're going to end up being there for the rest of your life or you're going to fucking die. I was lucky to realize on my last time, and, and I realized this shit when I was in the fucking hole, man. I was in the hole for six months that last time. And, and in the hole, bro, it, it, it almost like it clicked. I, I, I'm telling you, it sounds fucking weird and shit, but it fucking clicked for me, bro. And I was by myself. I got up, look in the fucking mirror, and the mirror is a fucking piece of fucking uh, um, metal and shit that is shiny. That's the fucking mirror. But I'll get up from my bed from reading a book, and, and I'll just look in the mirror, and I say, what? I just look at myself. I was like, you're a fucking 
idiot. And I turn around, go back, sit the fuck down on the bunk, fucking read. An hour later, I get up and I just look at myself, you know, disappointed. You know what I'm saying? Calling myself an idiot because I'm thinking of everything that I was doing outside, which I thought was cool and this and that, whatever, making it like easy money, whatever the fuck I was doing. But you fast forward now, I know what it was, how stupid it was. Back then, I knew it was stupid when I realized, and I was like, man, I'm wasting my fucking life. When I get out, I have nothing. I don't have a place to live. I have nothing. So it clicked for me. That day, it clicked. So boom, I got out. I got out uh, that year. I got out of j uh, prison. And, and, and the thing that people don't understand is how hard it is to get out of gang banging and shit like that. Because I tried it before, the term before, where I, I kind of tried to leave to try to better myself a little bit, but I couldn't because I got out to the same place where the gang was at. And if your friends are there and you're trying to do good, they're always going to pull you back in, always. So what I did on that last one, I realized, because I had time and the whole you have time, okay, I realized I was stupid, fucking up, throwing my life away. So when I got out, back then, in the 90s, we used to have little booklets. There was no cell phone to store all your numbers. I know that's crazy, right, guys? <laughs> but seriously, we used to have a little book and, and numbers written on it. That was our little notebook, like a little phone book, right? When I walked out of prison, brother, the last goodbye, bro, inside the trash can, inside the prison, I just dropped it. And I walked out. And I dropped it there inside the prison because you know how it is. You might have second thoughts. But if you leave it inside the prison, brother, there is no turning back. So from that day on, the second thing I did after getting rid of all my numbers, I moved out of the neighborhood. I moved away. I came to the valley, to San Fernando Valley. I was from LA. So I moved and I moved away from all this shit. And so boom, there. I went, got a fucking job doing bodyguarding and security, bro. I know it's tough, right? Security and bodyguarding from a guy that just got out of jail. But seriously, bro, I, I was not a, like, you know, I was not a fucking piece of shit that was going to go and backstab. No, bro, I, I'm loyal motherfucker, dude. This dude gave me a fucking chance, bro. Trust me, I would do anything. I st I'm still in contact with that guy, bro. His name is Tony. He gave me a chance, bro, knowing that I just got out and all that shit, bro. Oh, bro, I was, I was the best worker ever, bro. I became a supervisor, and I was in charge of everything for this guy. So we were doing bodyguard and security for film, and this is how I can start it. Uh, around 2000, we're doing bodyguarding for this film, and I'm sitting outside a trailer, right? <laughs> Trying to look tough and shit. <laughs> Trying to look tough. Um, and I'm waiting for the guy to come out. And at the time, I had a big tattoo on my neck. I had tattoos here. Uh, I have a lot more tattoos. And, and I'm wearing a hat and I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt because I'm trying to cover tattoos, right? And the fucking director, I see him coming from the parking and over there, right, to the side. But I don't look at this guy. I'm just here, trying to look tough, waiting for my guy to come out so I can walk him to the set. And the director's coming, and I know he's coming because I feel somebody's fucking looking at me. But I did not turn to say hi or anything because the motherfucker, I've been working on this for a month, and he never said fucking hi to me, man. He never, he was not nice, you know? So I'm like, you know what, fuck him. I'm not gonna say shit. I'm just gonna do my job and just, just mind your business. All right, boom. And this dude, I, he's getting closer, and I, you feel when somebody's looking at you from the side. And as he gets closer, bro, closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, oh man, this motherfucker's walking to me. And he comes right here behind my shoulder on this side, bro. And he just pulls my shirt from the side. He goes like this. And he pulls my shirt down like that, bro, to look at my tattoos. So he, like, he goes like this. And, and, and as soon as he did that, bro, I'm, I'm, it, it was like a second, bro. But in my mind, bro, everything that crossed my mind was, I'm in trouble. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get fired. This motherfucker knows I got out of fucking jail and I'm doing that. I, I was everything. I was just like, the worst is gonna happen. And this fucker just pulls my shit down. And I'm telling you, one or two seconds, bro, pulls it down. And his words were, hey, uh, do you wanna be in the film? And I was like, huh? Left field, bro. Like, left. Like, I was like, what? Do you wanna be in the film? And, and now, quickly, I'm, I'm back. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. I said, um, um, I just worked. I'm almost on my 12 hour shift. I'm about to get off in 10 minutes. And I really, and I'm thinking back, I, I've been working on this film thing. You know what I'm saying? So I know how background they do back. And sometimes bro, I'm not going to lie background. Hey bro, they work hard, bro. And they don't get that respect. And I've seen it. And now as an actor, as an actor, I see it too. I always, bro, I go chop it up with them all the time. I respect them, but not a lot of people do, bro. And so I saw that and I said, 
thank you, sir, to the director. And this is the director, bro. No, thank you, sir, so much. But I re I'm getting off in about 10 minutes, and I really don't want to do background work. That's to me what he was offering me. I thought it was background work. And he's a director, bro. He looks at me. All right. And he, he just goes. He starts walking, and he starts walking to Video Village. Video Village is where you know how the director, the producers, you know that some people might not know this, but that's where the, the big kahunas congregate. You know, the big, the director, producer, and everybody. That's the VIP the lounge. VIP area. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where you go. So this dude goes to the VIP area, Video Village, and the producers are there. He's the director, and everybody, oh, man, and I'm thinking, and, and, and when he walks there, like, people just come, right, and they start, like, a meeting. Now it's like 10 people, and, and they're in a little circle talking, and they look at me, and I'm like, oh, my God, why did I say no? This motherfucker, now he said, he said no, we're going to fire him, fucking piece of shit. And I, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm getting ready. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I'm going to get another job. And out of the group, a little guy comes, and he walks to me, and he's like, uh, now this guy, bro, he spoke my language, Chris. This guy approached me, and he was like, Hey, homie, you, you sure you don't want to be in the movie, bro? He said the word, homie, come on, I just got out of prison, bro. I understood that. I knew this guy was knew what's up. And bro, he said, homie, you, you're not, you want to be in the movie? And I said, eh. and before I even said no, he was like, dude, we're going to give you $500 for 30 minutes. <laughs> what the fuck do you think I said, Chris? Bro, he said $500 for 30 minutes, brother. My, my, my security thing, the bodyguard, the black thing that they gave you, bro, I said, for 30 minutes? let's go you know what i'm saying and so that's how i started bro and i ended up working a month doing the same thing i'm doing here uh, i was a bodyguard that's the guy told he said we're gonna give 500 dollars to do exactly the same shit you're doing right here but on film you're gonna be the main actresses the main actress's bodyguard uh, hey you know that funny one bro hey uh the i posted a picture on instagram it was jennifer tilly I posted it yesterday, bro. She, I was her bodyguard on this film. And so that's how I started, bro. And it turned out to be a month job for me. My boss, again, Tony, bro, the guy that gave me the, 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 the bodyguard and security job, bro, he was so happy for me. He knew my story. And, and he was so cool, bro, to every single time I had to work, I was doing, I was working as, as a bodyguard or security on the show. So every time I had to be on screen, he said, bro, you call me and I'll send a guy fucking an hour earlier so you do your thing. Bro, every single time, hey, Tony, I'm working at 12 today. I'll, the guy's going to be at 11 today. Luke, do your thing. Bro, awesome guy, bro. And to this day, we're friends, bro. Like, that's one of good friends, you know what I'm saying? Because he gave me a chance, bro, when, when trust me, bro. Motherfucker tries to get out of jail, bro. A lot of people fail because they don't have a chance. Nobody gives them a chance. You know, and there are some legit people, bro. There are some people that actually want to change their lives. But probably the circumstances led them to go to prison. You know what I'm saying? It was not them being bad. Yeah, there's some bad piece of shit out there. Yeah. But there's people that are not. There's people that because of need or whatever it was, they end up in prison. But when they get out, they want to, they want to do better. You know, I, I'm not going to say I was a piece of shit when I was young because I, I didn't really do, like, when you're going to be, I didn't, I, I didn't consider I did anything bad to people that did not deserve it. Because if you're doing gangbanging and I'm doing, and, and we meet on the street, something bad is going to happen, right? But we're both doing bad. I was not, hey, let me go fucking rob that person that has nothing to do with nothing. To me, I treat everybody like a fucking civilian, bro. So I don't fuck with people that were not, why? I don't want to go rob this person. I don't want to go do, no. You know, so I always think like that, bro. But yeah, that's, that's the story how I started acting. So, so the acting, bro, that first job, that guy, bro, got me a, um, a, a manager, an agent, and he said, Louis, oh, this is what he said when I started. He said, after we finished this job, bro, he was like, hey, bro, do, this is the same guy that came and spoke my language, right? His name was Manuel Jimenez, by the way. But he, he was like, hey, bro, do you want to keep doing his acting thing? And I was like, is he going to pay me the same you're paying me right now? And he said, no, bro, if you join SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, you're going to get a lot more than that. And I was like, what? <laughs> and, and then, again, the guy speaking my language, he was like, bro, all you got to do is keep your, your job. And when we get something, we'll call you. And I said, huh, really? Cool. So we did. So then he ended up getting manager and agent. And he suggested reading books for acting. You know, when it got a little bit better and better, the more you, you want to learn, now you, now you want to do something with this. Now you know you have a chance to do something. 
that's again what I told you about you. You're a go getter. Me at the time, I said, you know what, bro, I need to do something. You know, th that's when you kind of learn. Like, if it was so easy, everybody will be doing it. You understand? So then I started like, reading books. So Suspect Entertainment, bro, in the '90s, I want to say that this is. It was a group, but we got a lot of attention because it was ex gang members trying to, uh, you know, jump into the Hollywood thing. You know, seeing like. To be more realistic and when when they portray us you know portray uh, cricketers and fucking prison whatever and, and tv so, but it was a big thing because everybody was already away from the gang world and trying to do good and we got offered to go talk to kids in like schools or probation schools camps pro whatever it was to go talk to them about prison drugs and and what it like the truth about things, you know, not what people think. You know, people think that uh, oh, or kids think that oh, gangs are cool and this and that. Oh, you're gonna be a gang. They're gonna respect you. You're gonna have money, bro. It's the biggest type of shit ever. You know that comes with the price. You understand me? It's either gonna be your life or jail. You know, you gotta do a lot of bad shit. So no, it's not. And that's another one we're gonna probably touch in later, bro. It's a long story, you know. So, we, we, so because of the um, with motivation of speaking, for um, we got a lot of uh, media attention. We did interviews for Channel Eleven, Channel Seven, Channel Four, Channel Five, magazines. So that was a big boost. So then I started getting more jobs, and so the acting got more serious. And in two thousand five or six, I remember I got a job that allowed me to not do the other job anymore, the bodyguarding, because I kept the job for like four years after I got that job in 2002. I kept it until 2006. And in 2006, I worked in Fast and the Furious, Fast and the Furious, and a few other shows, but Fast and the Furious, even though I wasn't like, what, four, four or five scenes, and there was more, I worked in that show for two and a half months. So I was on hold a lot, but they pay you for that. But smart with your money, that's one thing, be smart. It allowed me to focus on acting more, fully 100 percent and so i did you know i say that money I, I started doing more 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 studying more coaching more books you, you know what i'm saying trying to get better always trying to get better you know so yeah that's how i started <laughs> so that was an awesome story of your journey lewis i really appreciate you being open with uh everyone listening mm -hmm. my hopes is that with this show uh we could depict athletes uh actors and entrepreneurs uh, who all have a, a fight in them uh, to be successful and, and have a better life. So uh, I know that your story is on one extreme, but I know people who are dealing with, you know, anything like substance abuse or, you know, weight loss or just trying to get a better job or be a better parent. We could all learn from each other and from stories like yours uh, about true redemption and, and turning your life all the way around. So, yeah, and I, I think we're definitely going to talk more another time about uh, your fighting and all your different roles. I know you do Comic-Cons. Hey, that, now, that, see, I'm going to tell you, that, that's fun, bro. That, that The coolest thing, and I, and, and I don't know why, bro, it, big, it brings joy to me, bro, is to interact with the fans. Because seriously, bro, it's, it's the most beautiful thing. Remember, when I grew up, bro, everybody hated us. Everybody looked at me. And they thought I was a fucking criminal, and, and, which, hey, I was, right? I was not like a fucking doing good shit. But really, bro, in my heart, bro, I, I, I don't. You see me, Chris. Me, bro, I, I, I'm happy, bro. I'm happy and I'm thankful. And, 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 bro, if I see you on the street and you need help, dude, I think, try me, motherfucker. I will help you. I, I would help you. I see anybody doing I would jump in that bitch. Even if it's 30 motherfuckers, I would jump because I, 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 it's in me, bro. I, that's what I want to do, you know? I was misguided when I was young, but, but that's not me, bro. So interacting with the fans, bro, at Comic Cons, bro, bro, <laughs> we have done photo shoots. And Comic Cons, it's, it's a business, right? You go, you pay for admission, you take pictures, you pay, bro. They pay for one picture. We never, Danny and I, I guarantee you, try this when you fucking meet us. You pay for one picture, you're gonna get a fucking photo shoot. That's how we roll. <laughs> On top mm -hmm. of that, they'll get a lot of photos, but they're also photos in character, right? You, you guys come suited and booted oh absolutely we can suit it and boot it and i'm gonna tell you what i think chris and we have the real the real deal i'll show you one real quick real quick don't leave watch this watch this <laughs> you gotta like this one chris so you guys remember the the axe we use in breaking bad well i do have that puppy right here there you go and this is the real deal guys 
we'll bring that, you know, and we'll come in the suits and all that shit, you know, and, and we'll take good pictures and and we're gonna tuck your ear off. You'll ask something and trust me, you're gonna fucking hear the truth. It's been a great time, Lewis. I know you got the kids, you got stuff to do, so I won't take up more of your time. I appreciate you being with us. Uh, I'll catch you next time at the gym. Uh, I know last time Absolutely, let me uh, work out with you a few minutes. Maybe this time uh, we'll put in another round. What do you say? Absolutely, brother. My pleasure. You know how much of a good time I had with you that day, bro. We're going to do more. And we're going to chill. You know why we're going to do a follow-up from this video, bro? We're going to post a video of us training, Chris. We'll train a little bit and record some good combinations for them. All right, man. Well, you're uh, officially my first guest. And uh, I hope you're my homie for a oh, long time. Here, give me a virtual pound. Right there, my brother. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed Thank it. You. Luis Moncada. You can catch him on Breaking Bad, Fast and Furious, Queen of the South, and my favorite, gang-related. Thank you, guys. Woohoo! I see you, man.